Hi everyone, and welcome to North Star Knife Reviews. Today is episode six of our Scandinavian knife series, and these are just a few that we'll be looking at over the next several episodes. I also have a couple more that aren't here right now, uh, but today we're going to start with this one up here. Uh, but these are all Scandinavian Nordic knives. You can see they're all a little bit different styling, um, but you know, they all sort of fit in that broad category. So today we start with this one, then we'll move on uh, to these as well as the other two that I have uh, waiting in the wings. So, Pucos, okay, because that's what these all are basically uh, styles of Pucos are going to be what, what we'll be looking at for the rest of this series. Um, Puko just means knife in Finnish, at least that's my understanding. Uh, and the Puko traditionally is the knife of the Sami, who are the indigenous population of the northern part of Scandinavia and Finland, and a little bit in Russia. Um, larger knives are called liukus, uh, but um, these types of knives, these Pukos, are the ones that are going to be, let's say, three, three and a half inch blade or less. And when they get beyond that, they're more of a chopping tool and become... Uh, Ryuku. So today, this first traditional knife that we're going to look at, as you can see, is from Martini. And this, uh, actually, I got, uh, came in since I recorded the last episode, which was the modern Martini. Uh, if you remember, I said I was hoping that it arrived, and it did. Uh, left the tag on this just so you could see it. Um, you know, if you want to stop and read what it says in here inside in your choice of languages you can certainly do so all right this is probably the most modern looking of the five traditional well no the last one is probably a little more modern but this is a little more modern styling i think than than the other pucos i have um, this as you can see has a fairly small blade well, let's take a look at the sheath first, I guess. Um, leather sheath has a little belt loop on the back. And you can also, if, you can, if I can get this in the light here so we can see it. Um, there we go. Also has a little slit with a little hole up here. You can put this on a button. Uh, for example, uh, if you're wearing overalls or something like that, you could put this on the button on your chest strap. Um, and that's similar to what you see on the, uh, the plastic sheaths from Mora. Okay, um, so just a little uh, sort of interesting addition to the, to the sheath. Um, otherwise, the sheath is just this black leather, uh, decent, you know, it says martini on it, uh, just in black on black, so it's very subtle. Um, and a decent sheath. Uh, it does have a little plastic insert down here, which is pretty common in uh, these types of knives. Traditionally, there would be a wood, wooden insert down here, but now uh, they use plastic for most knives. All right, the knife itself. You can see this is going to run right about eight inches long, but you know, four inches is gonna be the handle, or excuse me, uh, seven inches long. Boy, I was looking wrong there. Four inches is going to be the handle. Then the ferrule is, it takes about a half an inch. And then you have about two and a half inch of blade. Okay, and the cutting edge on this uh, knife is going to be right around two inches. Now, traditionally, uh, a puko would not have a ricasso. Um, the blade would come all the way to the ferrule or the bolster or just the wooden handle. Uh, or reindeer horn or whatever it was. So having a ricasso like this is not common among pucos. They, there are some that do have them, but it's not common. See, this is a high carbon blade. It says Martini Finland. And I don't know for, uh, for sure, 100%, what type of steel this is, uh, because the Martini website doesn't say. But from reading a few other articles online, the consensus is that what they're using is SK5, which is a perfectly fine steel. 
going to behave very much like 1095 or something like that. So that's, you know, you sort of know what you're getting. Okay. Um, you can see it is a Scandi grind. Has a 90 degree spine, so you should be able to strike a ferro rod on that. Fairly thick blade stock, certainly uh, thicker than a Mora. Let me see here, I have a Mora in my desk. Let's take a look. Okay, there you can see the difference in the thickness between the Mora and this uh, Martini Puco. Very sharp blade out of the box. Um, the ferrule, I believe, is brass, it looks like to me. Uh, I don't know if it said on the website. Um, I forgot to check this morning. There are a little bit of fit and finish issues. You can see the staining on the handle has come up a little bit on the ferrule. Certainly nothing that's going to impact performance in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but that's probably not something you'd see on a more expensive knife. You know, this ran about $30, okay? And you can, I, I see it anywhere from 30 to close to 40. Um, I was able to get a pretty decent price, I think. Um, you have the wooden handle. This is birch, and it is stained with a pretty dark stain. Uh, this is not curly birch. This is just regular birch, which is a little cheaper. And you can see um, the tang does not go all the way through. Um, this, the Pucos are always going to be a, a uh, rat tail tang. Sometimes they go the full length, sometimes they don't. Very rare to have a full tang in a Nordic knife. Um, if you have a full tang, it gets very cold. And so this is um, better. And as long as you're not using it for extremely tough chopping or anything like that, it's perfectly fine. Okay. I'm going to guess that the tang comes probably down to about here. Okay. Um, I think this is a pretty little knife, you know, very, very simple, very plain, feels really good in hand, you know, nice little blade for some detail work. Um, these were used for woodworking. They were used for processing animals and game. Uh, they were used for food prep, all sorts of things. You know, this is a little bit on the short end, but I kind of like these short blades, um, on these, uh, but you know, you might get anywhere from this two inch up to about a three and a half or four inch on, on a Puko, All right? Well, I hope you take, take, liked taking a look at this. We'll be moving on next time into another one of the traditional type of Pucos. And I think we'll be looking at the Ati next. All right, you guys have a good day. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a good new year. I will catch you next time.